and welcome. In this episode, we are going to attempt to answer the question, what is the shape of the earth? Before we get started, please get out your packets open to page number one, and we will be filling in the top section of this page as the video progresses. Let's begin. So what exactly is the shape of the earth? Well, you might be thinking to yourself, duh, the earth is round. That's obvious, everybody knows that. However, if you look back at history, there's a long list of stories of people's terrible fears of falling off the edge of the earth. One of the more notable stories involves explorer Christopher Columbus, who when he set sail for the New World in 1492, had fears that he and his crew would meet a terrible end falling off the edge of a flat earth. Interestingly, Columbus would later be credited with the discovery of determining that the Earth is in fact round by not falling off the edge of the Earth. But that's not exactly true. In fact, we've known that the Earth is round for thousands of years. In fact, this Greek philosopher named Pythagoras, who was also a mathematician, made the observation more than 2,500 years ago that the Earth has to be round, simply based on logic. But that's not enough. How exactly do we know the true shape of the Earth? In this discussion, we're going to take a look at four pieces of evidence, or four proofs, that will hopefully convince you of the true shape of our planet. Let's take a look at proof number one. Now, proof number one involves the Moon, our closest neighbor in the solar system, seen here at its various phases, which can be visible from Earth throughout the month. People have been observing the moon for thousands of years, and they have noticed that the lit up portion of the moon has different amounts visible at different times, and this can be seen in this diagram. Now the only way that these strange shapes of the illuminated size, the crescents, the gibbous, the, the first quarter and last quarter, the only way these shapes would be visible is if in fact the moon is round. And yes, it is a big giant sphere orbiting the Earth. Now, early astronomer Aristotle, who lived more than 1700 years ago, noted this, and he went a step further. He observed the moon during lunar eclipses, and what Aristotle noted was that during a lunar eclipse, the Earth's shadow is cast on the moon, and the Earth casts not a straight shadow, but a rounded shadow. Aristotle deduced that the only possible shape that can always cast a rounded shadow is a sphere. And from that moment, we had our first piece of concrete evidence of a spherical or round Earth. Let's go to our handout. Proof number one is that the Earth casts a rounded shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse. You can pause here and fill in that portion of your handout. Let's move on. We need some more evidence, because I'm certainly not convinced yet. So here comes proof number two. Imagine going down to the ocean and looking out in the distance at a vast sea ahead of you. Off in the distance you will see the horizon. The horizon is the point where the sea meets the land, shown here by a horizontal black line. Now imagine your friend is taking his new ship out for a nice sail on the high seas. Now of course, as your friend gets further away, the ship is going to appear smaller and smaller and smaller. That is our rule of apparent diameter. As something gets more distant, it appears smaller. Easy. But if you watch carefully, as your friend and his ship get further and further away, they will actually appear to sink over the horizon. Now one of two things could be true. First, he could actually be sinking, which would be a terrible shame. But the more likely explanation involves the shape of the planet that he is sailing upon. If you look here, the dotted line is showing a line of sight from you, the observer. Now, as your friend sails away, you'll see most of their boat for quite a while. But as they go over the horizon, the ship is going to appear to sink. In reality, it's not sinking. It's simply traveling along the curved surface of our planet. You can see that in this photograph here. This is a large steam tanker. And all that's visible from this distance is the top of the mast. The main part of the ship is around the curve of the Earth and not visible from where we are. Even more impressive is this photograph of the city of Toronto in Canada. When you look at it, only the tip tops of the tallest buildings are visible. That doesn't mean the whole city is sinking. What it means is that it is so distant that it is seen only partially due to the curved surface of the Earth. And that's evidence number two. 
So go to your handouts and in proof number two, we're going to write what we call the sinking ship theory. Ships appear to sink as they pass over the curved surface of the earth. Pause here and fill that in. So let's move on to proof number three. This is a really interesting one. Let's take a look at an earth. Here's the earth. And let's imagine slicing the earth in half so that we could look inside it. Now, don't worry about all these layers. We'll be learning about the interior of the Earth later in the year. But for the moment, let's imagine an individual observer standing on the surface of the Earth, let's say right over there. Now, this person could weigh themselves on a scale to determine how much they weigh. How much you weigh is in part a result of the pull of gravity. The more gravity, the more you weigh. So, what impacts how much gravity there is? Well, in part, it is the distance between you and the object's center of gravity. This is to say that the closer you are to the center, the more you will weigh. The further away you are, the less you will weigh. Keep that in mind. Now let's say we had an oddly shaped planet, shaped kind of like a big egg, almost. Our observer on the top is actually a little bit closer to the center of the Earth when he's at this top portion of the planet that's going to cause him to weigh more. If he moves over here, he's a little further from the center of the planet, causing him to weigh less. So if the Earth were any shape other than a sphere, our weights would vary dramatically as we went to different places on the Earth. But the fact is, if you take the Earth and you put individuals at any point you want on the planet, and you open up the Earth, and you weigh these people, they're going to weigh just about the same thing everywhere. And what we can conclude from that is that everywhere on the Earth is the same distance from the center. And if that is true, the Earth must be a sphere. Let's go to our handout. This will be proof number three. The pull of gravity is just about equal from any point on the Earth's surface, proving that the Earth is spherical. One more to go. Proof number four, and this one is really easy. Unfortunately, it's restricted to modern times. Proof number four involves photographs. This photograph of the Earth right here was taken way back in 1972 by the crew of the Apollo 17 mission. As they flew their way to the moon, they would eventually land there and walk on the moon, but on the way, they turned their capsule in such a way that they could photograph the Earth. And what's so special about this photograph is that it was the first time we've ever captured the full disk of the Earth. That's because this photograph was taken while the sun was behind the astronauts. And so you could see the entire illuminated side of the Earth. Now to me, this is pretty convincing evidence of a spherical planet. We can actually now go to, to space and see the Earth and actually directly observe its shape. But again, some might argue, based on this picture, oh, maybe the Earth is shaped like a frisbee or a disk, and it's not really a sphere. Well, we've got evidence to answer that question as well. A little bit later on in 1990, the Galileo spacecraft turned around, faced the Earth, and took this time-lapse video, one of the most beautiful videos of the rotating planet ever taken. And this becomes pretty much uh, undisputed evidence that the Earth is in fact a sphere. And so that's going to be our proof number four. We can now actually travel to space and take photos and videos of the Earth directly observing its true shape. And so those are our four major pieces of evidence supporting a round Earth. Now of course I could go on and on. We actually have dozens of proofs, but these are the four that we're going to focus on in our class. Just a quick review, the four proofs for a round Earth include the shadow during a lunar eclipse is round, so the Earth must be round, the sinking ship observation where sinks appear to sh ships appear to sink as they pass over the horizon, that proves that the Earth is round, the fact that no matter where you go on the planet there's an equal amount of gravity, that proves the Earth must be round, and then, most convincing of all, the fact that we can go and actually directly observe the Earth from space, that proves that the Earth is round. Thank you. Have a good night.